Speaking of ladies, ladies, please say the dates between Friday and Sunday, May 22nd through the 24th for Free to Soar 2015 11th Annual Women's Conference at New Faith Baptist Church International. Join us for exciting four days of praise and spiritual growth. For more information of the location and registration fees, please go to www.newfaith.org. Check out Everyone Has a Story TV Talk Show Season 7 on Can TV this spring. The show main purpose is to educate and inform people within the community. The host, Marcus Jones, believes everyone has a story, so you don't want to miss all of the exciting stories that's lined up to bring healing and love back to the community. Also, check out Marcus Jones' website at www.marcusjonesstory.com, where you can see Marcus' story, trailers from past shows, pictures, and to schedule speaking engagements. The Let's Stay Together talk show will be the guest on Everyone Has a Story this Sunday on April the 19th. Our topic, Senior Abuse in Nursing Homes and Domestic Violence. We also would like to say, if you're looking for a great cause, help New Faith Baptist Church International fight against Ebola. Go to Amazon to support the Joseph Assignment go to www.smile.amazon.com. Right after our show, you can tune in to hear more great preaching at New Faith Baptist International Church with Pastor Chernell Felder. This broadcast comes on every Tuesday at 9 p.m. at WYJS. Please check out our Can TV promo commercial on our website, at www.letstaytogethertalkshow.com and like the Let's Stay Together show on Facebook. Again, this was Brenda McCain from the Let's Stay Together Talk Show and that was this week's announcements and this concludes the announcements for our show. Now boarding the McCain Train with Reverend Rick and author Brenda McCain. They're bringing hot and powerful topics regarding relevant issues on marriage, relationships, and life-changing family topics. And they are funny, engaging, energetic, and they bring real talk that reaches beyond the walls of the church. They have been successful because they have discussed topics like, Help me, I want to grow old. My addiction is hurting my relationship. Aborted but not forgotten. Living in an HIV AIDS relationship. The hand that loves me is hurting me. So if you want to know their glory, you have to know their backstory. So get on board the McCain train and listen to the Let's Stay Together Internet Talk Show. Director Malcolm Williams in great faith and you're listening to the Let's Stay Together Show. Hello, this is Reverend Rick McCain and I'm with my wife, Arthur Brenda McCain, my baby, my girl, my boo, and this is the Let's Stay Together Show. (laughs) And we are here and honored to be here with Terry Vaughn and Terry, we are just so happy to have you here on the Let's Stay Together show. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Well, great. Tell us a little bit about uh, your role in this uh, movie, 72 Hours. You're Ricky Dillon, and you're listening to the Let's Stay Together radio show. Hello, this is Reverend Rick McCain, and I'm here with my baby, my girl, my boo, author Brenda McCain from the Let's Stay Together show, and I love my wife, but let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, this is an actor that I love. Mr. Harry Lennox, it is so nice to see you, sir. Thank you for being on the Let's Stay Together show. Well, thank you, Rick. This is, this is great, uh, and I am uh, honored to be with you and your beautiful wife. Well, my question for this beautiful lady is she's very modest. And if I can do a shout out to you, because I got <laughs> approval for Because this is my girl. I'm taking it back to LaVita from Steve Harvey, but I love all of her work and everything that she does. And she's a three-time Image Award winner. So that's why I said she's modest. And I know you're going to bring to this movie the goodness that you brought to Debbie's little girl, because you was so good as a level-headed girlfriend that kept everything going. She was me. <laughs> no, she was real. level-headed. She, she, was, she was, but I love you. Very so. You don't do me wrong. <laughs> I love you. 
you would like to advertise on the Let's Stay Together talk show or be a sponsor, contact us at letstaytogethertalkshow.com and call 708-713-4958. Welcome back to the Let's Stay Together talk show. Your next stop, the McCain train. Now here is the Let's Stay Together show with Reverend Ricardo McCain and author Brenda McCain, helping you to rebuild your relationships with God. Hey, we're back. We've got one hour left. Man, this has been such a an awesome, I mean, I'm sorry, we have one half hour left. Thank you, Tracy. I'm trying to extend the time. UBM, y'all need to give me some free time. Uh, <laughs> we've got about half an hour left here. We've been here with uh, Joseph Telez. And how'd you say it? And you know how I should say it in my uh, Latino thing. How do you say that again? Tayez. Tayez. And so uh, we've got him here for the Delaney Foundation, and uh, we've had an excellent time talking about mental health. And so, baby, uh, continue on with your uh, questions that you have for Mr. Tayez. Okay. Um, this question is: What are the most common serious mental disorders in children and in adults? Well, in children, um, a big one that we are seeing is ADHD. Mm -hmm. And that is something that is really becoming more prevalent. Um, Underneath ADHD, there is also ODD, which is something that I I personally have come across. Mm. Um, And that is oppositional defiant disorder. Mm. Um, Write that one down, Brian. And the not following (laughs) directions. um, You know, and especially growing up as a teenager or that rebellion stage, however... There, it's an it's 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 to a point of excessiveness, um, you know, and there is actual a diagnosis for that. Um, as far as common, um, I can't I can't label a common diagnosis. Yeah, I mean, because there's so depression? many of them out there. I mean, depression is a yeah. really big big one. It's a heavy one. Yeah, Bipolar. but that could be. But that can depression could fall into so many of disorders, couldn't it? Because I mean, well, one well, person depression is it's 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 its own diagnosis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they, there's different, there's actually different forms of it. Right. Because, I mean, I could be in, in, in a mood disorder and have well, and depression. Well, depression could be, is a mood disorder. Yeah. Okay, so that's a part of it. So it, schizophrenia wouldn't, would that? That would be a psychotic disorder. Okay, and so that wouldn't fall okay, under. Okay, wait a minute. Go back to, see, he's schooling me. Yeah, okay. Depression well, you know, is, you know listen, listen to the, the CD after it's over. Oh, we, you, we, we, the, oh, you know You know what I'm talking about. Thing. Listen to the recording. At, you know, they play this on uh, UBM several anyway, times. Anyway, so. Joe, so what did you say? <laughs> depression is considered a what a now? Mood, it's, it is considered a mood disorder. A mood disorder. And then schizophrenia is? A psychotic disorder. Oh, that sounds so dangerous. She's putting this down to write and to write about something. I know. Her. <laughs> and bipolar is it, that would be a mood disorder. Wow. So anything that affects your mood, mood, any kind of change of mood or irregularity of mood or <coughs> unstable moods, so would be really. What about PMS? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked me about that today. Well, that is perfectly natural, and oh, I am okay. not. Oh, is that going supposed to be natural? natural. <laughs> That's not natural. That, that he said, "I am not going to touch that one." That That's a smart just, man. That is just part of a good personality. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> The thing after you, because I never birthed the baby, but after you birthed the baby, post trauma, uh, yeah. is that a disorder? Depression. Postpartum, no. postpartum, yeah, postpartum depression. depression. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. It's it's not a form of depression, but it is diagnosed in that book, that DSM. Okay, because you know there have been a lot of women that killed their babies after they yeah, had them. I'm like, oh my. Yeah. Okay, oh, then. But that is a right? clinical oh, disorder. Okay. That yeah, is, that is very much a clinical disorder. And so, uh, Tracy, you was, you know, I don't know if you want to share. We was talking about certain things that you were talking about as well. You want some things you want to share real quick before I, I'm going to jump on uh, Joseph in a second as a, a mentally disordered, m- mentally disabled individual. Uh, I don't want to say it because I know Brenda's over there shaking her head like, yeah, that's him. <laughs> a mentally disabled individual. And we're going to talk about how he's going to help me. Uh, with understanding and I need some assistance. But yeah, go no, ahead. we were just talking about being forced into treatment and I was saying when uh, I had gone through my divorce, I had gotten, you know, to the point of like a little mini nervous breakdown to the point my family was really trying to force me into getting some help because I had done some things to hurt myself, um, attempted to hurt others, but I knew I really wouldn't. But someone actually came one day and said, hey, we think you need to go and get some help. And I was, you know, fighting against it, but because of the way they do it, you know, is, are you okay? Do you know what day it is? You know, and they could not force me into getting treatment, but I will say this, it did 
set off a light bulb, even though I was very angry at my family for a long time, it set off a light bulb in me that said, okay, you know what, you really need to consider getting some help, you know, which it was basically just getting on an antidepressant. But if I hadn't, it could have gotten worse to the point that, you know, I could have hurt me, you know, to the How point. How long did you stay on an antidepressant? Um, m- weirdly enough, only a few months. Yeah. And, and um, like I said, it, I was very different because I accidentally left my medication at home and I was gone for the weekend and I went to see Joyce Myers and I know it sounds crazy. Man, it's but not crazy. No, God, can, God. God can change some things. Yeah, yeah, Joyce yeah, Meyer. I, I love Joyce Meyer. So, hey, man. I didn't have to go back. Hey, man. And okay. I like that. But I also recognize my triggers now. So I know what to do and when to do it. So, Joseph, is it, you know, is it. Thank you, Trace. Is it, um, you know, is it good for someone to just to force someone into something like that? I mean, you know, I mean, you know, it was good in her behalf, but could it trigger a negative effect as well? Well, first first and foremost is you really can't force anyone to get this help. Let me take that back. There's only one situation that you can actually force somebody to, to go into some form of hospitalization or some form of mandatory stabilization, and that is if there is eminent danger to either an individual or eminent danger as far as you know self-harming oneself. Um, otherwise, other than that, all of these other situations, um, we can't control what people do. And as much as we know that someone may need to get the help or do the work to really try and improve on situations, we can't control and we can't force them. Yeah. You know, Joseph, uh, one of the things I'm going to do, I was, I was going to start something else, but we, we need to talk about the other side of the scenario when someone has a mental disorder, the family, the friends. How, how does it affect them and what can they do to maybe – assist someone uh, with a disorder because a lot of times the family has to be the one that's that changes their total life to be able to help this person with disorder how do we how do they how do we help them or does does laney foundation help the family as well how do how do they get help absolutely um and again looking at these individuals these children that, that we work with at the laney foundation they are part of a family unit and a family unit is a system and when I say the word system, I mean it um, in the sense of if each family member is a turning wheel, there is a chain that binds them together. And the only way that the chain moves is if all wheels are able to turn freely and function right. Mm-hmm. So if we have one of the children or one of the family members who does have one of these you know, mental health concerns, mental health issues, mental health diagnoses, whatever we'll call it, it's going to impact the entire system of the family and that chain stops turning. It stops turning. Right. And And... Um, this goes all the way back even to my, my personal experiences. This goes all the way back to my, I'm thinking of my grandmother right now. And my grandmother used the old saying that it takes a village to raise a child. <laughs> and not just the family, but even, you know, the, the school teachers, the, the people in the community, the mental health practitioners, we are that village. And being that I am in the helping profession, I, I, I take responsibility for being part of that village. And not only do I do that, but part of the work, it's not just working with the children who are presenting these symptoms. It's really about educating because a lot of the times the parents or the, or the siblings, they need to be educated. And you have to teach them that this is, this is not something that you think it is. Mm-hmm. And you have to give them a different way to look at it. So really because you have to support whoever has these issues. And you have to, it's not so much that we're changing the individual that have these, these mental health issues. But we're actually changing the way that the people around them support them, yeah. And, and that and that 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 whole idea of that village, we are that village. Yeah, and you know, the one of the things that's so uh, you know amazing is that sometimes people don't realize is that when you're taking care of someone who has a mental disorder, the family uh, and the caregiver can also you know be a mentally you know troubled by you know certain things because they don't know how to handle it and they don't know the responsibilities of what needs to be done. So. Are there training processes that can help the people to understand how they can help someone with a disorder? Absolutely, Um, especially specifically at the Laney Foundation. So not only do we do the actual family therapy, but we also have parent support groups. And what these support groups are, um, it's basically like a kind of group therapeutic support that the parents come in who have children with these diagnoses and these issues, and, and they really, you know, they vent 
and they support each other, they help each other.